There's sort of a natural ebb and flow here in my garage where I do most of my projects and YouTube video making. Parts come in, I build systems with them, and then either I find a home for the systems or I disassemble them and try to find a home for the parts. Right now I'm at one of those points where I just got a little bit too much going on. I have multiple water-cooled systems that I'm working on right here. This one in the Singularity Spectre 2.0, this uh, Corsair Hydro X1. Parts are scattered across my work table. I've got piles over here. It's challenging for me even to get over to the bins I have over here where I have most of my water cooling stuff stored. So today I'm trying to handle a few different things. One, a bit of tidy and cleanup. Two, as I clean up the parts, I'm going to be choosing some select ones to build a system with. And then three, we're gonna be grabbing just the choicest of components to assemble a new editing system for Joe because he has been working with a six core system for far too long. We can't have any of that anymore. Uh, so we're gonna be updating him. At the same time, I have an idea for how to ask Twitter for some input as well. Excellent. Cooler Master's MK730 gaming mechanical keyboard is the more portable version of their flagship Master Key 750 and features the same premium brushed aluminum finished and floating key design as well as genuine Cherry MX switches in blue, brown, or red. Use the function keys for on-the-fly RGB LED control, admire the stylish bottom and side light bars, and feel the comfort of the removable wrist rest in a 10 keyless form factor that you can easily take on the go. It's got USB Type-C too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. So we've already made a lot of progress, just getting the table cleaned off, getting some stuff sorted away. Lots of remnants of old builds sitting around that I needed to sort and put away in a more efficient manner, but I'm sure I'll be better about doing that in the future. Moving on to the sort of secondary goal of this video though, and that is to build an updated system for Joe, because currently he is using a system based on an Intel Core i7 80, no, 6800K, which is a six core 12 thread processor. And there's just a lot more CPU compute horsepower out there, and Joe does does a lot of work with his CPU. Video transcoding in particular is really CPU intensive and he does proxies for just about all the videos he edits. I should probably give a little bit more context though because it is supposed to be more of an editing system than a gaming system. Uh, the P600S is here on my left, that's from Fantex. This is the white version. And then we have the Be Quiet Silent Base 600 here on my right. Uh, it's a very nice quick case and it's very quiet. It's also a little bit skinnier and taller versus the little bit wider stance I think of the P600S. It also does not have a side panel window, but uh, that's all right. Aesthetics are not our goal here. A powerful editing system is. I just tweeted out the picture of both of these. We're going to give the Twitter responders a little while to let us know what they think. Uh, I think I have like maybe three choices I'm going to pose to Twitter to let them choose what should go in Joe's system, and I'm giving Joe veto power for one of them. So if he thinks that there's a better, he has a better choice than what Twitter chooses, then he might opt to go with something else. Next choice though is going to be the core platform. We're going high-end desktop here since this is going to be a video editing system. And I have two choices. I've got X399, which is a Threadripper platform, which currently supports first and second gen Threadripper. And we're thinking we'll probably uh, support third gen Threadripper when that comes out later this year. And then we've got Intel's X299 high-end desktop platform here as well. And our candidate for that is the Asus Prime X299 Deluxe, a motherboard that I've actually already used for a while. So the benefit here would be it's already got a Windows license attached and associated with the motherboard. So it could just be installed and activated. Other than that, these two motherboards feature-wise are very comparable. They both have eight DIMM slots for DDR4 memory. A little bit more M.2 NVMe SSD support over here uh, with the X399 board. We got three M.2 slots. This is the Gigabyte Aorus. X399 Gaming 7 motherboard, in case I uh, didn't mention that already. Whereas on the Asus board, we've got two M.2 slots, one that's right here and a vertical one that's over here. And then there's also a U.2 slot. U.2 slot can also be used for an M.2 uh, drive, but you need to get an adapter for it. Beyond that, both boards will fit in either case, but if it does end up going with the Fantex P600S, both of them do also have that USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel connector. So I do like that that's included. But of course, Joe's gonna need a CPU to go in either of these boards. And to that end, I went and dug into my CPU archives or CPU stash to find out what I have available. Turns out I still have an unopened second gen Threadripper 12 core, the 2920X. Uh, so that's pretty nice. But I also have the first gen 16 core. So that would actually be a tough choice. First gen 16 core 1950X, second gen 12 core 2920X. The CPUs are over here. I have a bunch of engineering samples and whatnot. I went through and labeled a bunch of them, which I think is gonna be very helpful for the future to tell what's what. Like there's my 5820. Okay. Ew, here's a 7740X quad core on a high-end desktop platform. <laughs> anyway. 
I have two of them, don't worry. I think the most viable candidate here on the Intel side is gonna be the 7900X. I have an engineering sample of that. It's a 10 core, 20 thread processor, but it does have a little bit better single core performance. So single threaded performance would be improved there. So. Still have to ask Twitter a couple questions before we can move forward. It's actually been pretty fun just sort of hitting up Twitter and seeing what people's reactions and responses are. We've got some pretty solid responses for the platform. Definitely X399 is the way we're gonna go. Uh, that was decided pretty early on just based on how the votes were going. So from there, we then had to decide what is the processor gonna be. And uh, we got the 2920X right here. We got the 1950X. And it seems like people want the new rather than the more cores. Even though this is a 16 core 32 thread CPU, which might render out the videos just a little bit more. Uh, Joe likes to play video games too, and uh, the gaming performance is also something that he's somewhat concerned with. So 2920X is gonna give just a little bit more out of whatever GPU uh, ends up going in this system. So beyond that, we are filling out the rest of the system so we can get him a fully functional working system that he can bring home, and then he can work on transferring over from his old system, AKA Party Monster, which we built here on the channel if you guys wanna check it out. It was a fun build, lots of fun and mismatched parts. This one might look a little bit better, I think. But uh, I'm gonna send him home with the memory kit just so he can get everything up and running. This is a G-Skill Flare X kit, 3200 speed cast latency 14. This stuff just works with any Ryzen CPU you throw at it, so it should work great with Threadripper as well, and that's a great speed for second gen. Joe has a 128 gig memory kit in his existing system, so he's probably gonna switch over to that because some of the After Effects work he does actually does eat up 100 plus gigs of memory, so I don't have any 16 gig dims that I can uh, feed over to him, so he is eventually gonna swap over to that. But for storage, He's also got a lot of storage. That was one of the concerns for the case choice. So all I'm sending him home with for now is gonna be an operating system SSD. For that, we're going with the 960 Evo 500 gig NVMe SSD, which we'll install in one of those slots down there at the bottom. Since we've decided on the CPU and the platform, we can get a cooler going though. I have some air coolers, but we're gonna go with this Liquitec 2 TR4 version. Uh, Enermax did a great job with the second generation of these Liquitec coolers. This has a 500 watt TDP rating for heat dissipation. The last thing we gotta figure out is a graphics card. Let's see. I already mentioned that Joe gets one veto, so it sounds like he's probably gonna use it on the case, but uh, we'll give one more, one more option here. Uh, choice A or choice B, we've got the GeForce GTX 1650 here from Zotac. Doesn't require supplemental power. That's really nice, you know? If you're concerned at all about power efficiency or anything, uh, maybe that's the way to go. Alternatively, we've got the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti Lightning Edition here from MSI. This one has three eight pin power connectors. That's a lot, that's a crazy amount. So not sure if he's gonna be that interested in this, but we'll, we'll post this to Twitter as well and uh, let people give their feedback and you know, whatever they choose, what we're gonna have to go with, especially if Joe uses his veto up on the case. Oh, and did I mention this is actually Kyle's RTX 2080 Ti Lightning? Technically, I have it on long-term loan, but I, I don't think he'll mind. Surprise, Joe! Oh, I was surprised. I forgot that. to have you on camera here to be like, you use the shit out of it, game on it, dude. Yeah. Do all that stuff on it. I'm gonna use the shit out of that shit. <laughs> Last thing is the power supply, and uh, this power supply was actually sent over for use in the Corsair build that we're doing in the 280X case, the water cool build. We ended up going with a small form factor power supply for that build, so uh, this one currently not being used. It's the RM750X, 80 plus gold rated, plenty of extra power for stuff like an RTX 2080 Ti Lightning or lots of extra storage drives that might be added, all black cabling, uh, and I think that pretty much rounds out everything we've got going on here. We just have to check on those, those Twitter responses. Audience has spoken, so the uh, 2920X is gonna be the CPU, so uh, since this never actually got opened, uh, Joe's gonna do the honors right now. Yeah, I do not enjoy and, this whatsoever. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of glare. Oh, Ooh. nice. Ah. And that lid should open. Ooh, nice. Wow, Ta-da. Sweet. Thank you, guys. You guys helped with your voting. Excellent choices, guys. Wow. Wow, Joe. All right, so we've, we've been delaying, we've been intentionally delaying because the initial poll that I put up between the two cases, the Fantex P600S and the Be Quiet Silent Base 600 is still ongoing and it's at 50%, literally 50, 50 to 50 right now. Originally the Fantex case was winning, then the Silent Base 600 crept up and took the lead. Now it's back to 50-50. There's over 1,700 votes. So, so <laughs> thanks to everyone for your feedback and voting. Moving down the list though, fortunately it was, it was decided pretty early on. Uh, we're going with uh, AMD thread 
threader per platform versus Intel's high-end desktop, so we figured that out. Choice of CPUs, everyone seemed to opt towards the second-gen threader per stuff, so we got the 2920X in there, that's great as well. Got the SSD installed in the top slot there, leaving the lower two slots open so that Joe can add more storage there in the future. Will do. And then of course there was the last very important poll about the graphics card, where we had the difficult decision between the Zotac GTX 1650 and the uh, RTX 2080 Ti. Fortunately, for Joe, it seems like about 75% of people feel <laughs> that the 2080 Ti is the way to go here. Now, obviously there could be an argument made there, but uh, we'll just go with the will of the people for now, I think. Uh, so thanks to all you guys again who voted. We're gonna go with the RTX 2080 Ti. Last decision that we still haven't figured out is the case though. Uh, so Joe, do you have any feelings? Do you wanna ex exercise your veto power one way or the other here on the case? People are saying to be quiet because Silence is golden, however, I want more functionality. And you shouldn't wear the headphones when I'm editing, so I don't care too much about silence that much. So, going with Fantex. So, we're gonna go with the Fantex P600S. That's Joe's choice here. A couple other things to consider for the case are gonna be storage options. P600S actually has quite a few of those. There's three 2.5 inch drive mounts behind uh, the motherboard tray, and then there's a bunch of cages that can be added on. And I think a pretty nice little feature here is gonna be that USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. Uh, the motherboard has one, the case has one. Be Quiet Case did not have one. And Joe, whenever he comes over and we film stuff we transfer it onto an external samsung uh, ssd and now right now you have to like fish around the back of your system to plug it in Do the reach around thing. yeah we don't want we don't want joe to have to continue this reach around action that he's gotten so good at <laughs> but all right guys uh, we now need to get the system put together uh, stay tuned for an epic build montage And just like that, guys, we have a new system. A system put together from parts that I otherwise just had lying around, lying around, sort of. Of course, I've had ideas in mind for a long time about what to do with this hardware, just had to bring it to fruition today. Uh, Joe is happy because he now has this much upgraded system going from six core rig to a 12 core rig, 24 cores, thread ripper, tons of IO, tons of room for expansion. Uh, Joe was already talking about the drive cages that go up here that Fantex provides. Fantex gives you four. You can actually fit two stacks uh, down in the bottom. So you can put all four down in the basement, but you can also fit stacks of two in the uh, front area up here as well. So you can do a, six more additional drive mounts there so uh, but guys let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to see any more on this build and maybe we can do more follow-up on this build joe has a couple ideas for names but i don't know if they're the best ideas so if you guys have ideas for names then leave them in the comment section down below and you know what i should probably do before we close this video is actually turn this on for the first time that might be something good to do so there's power switch in the back there's power switch in the front hey hey we have power, we have RGB LEDs inside, and I particularly like that none of the fans in this case are RGB. The fans stay stealthy, and there's just a few accents on the motherboard, graphics card, and the cooler, of course. But guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. Again, if you have uh, any feedback for us on this build or any requests for the follow-up video, leave those in the comment section down below. Hit the thumbs up button too while you're down there. Thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you next time.